Now we're going to apply the dead load, the distributed dead load. We have a dead load pressure of 20 PSF. What is a tributary width of my one-way slab? 12 inches or one foot. So what is my distributed load on this one beam? 20 pounds per foot. I'm going to go click on basic load cases. So this BLC, boom, right there, dead load. You know, we're going to use the category for the dead load thing here. So I'm going to call this dead load. Boom. And I want to have that name. I'm going to tell you that we're going to have a live load case one. Live load. I'll just, let's just call it L. Oh, it's okay. We're typing. It's fast. Live load case two and live load case three. You could put the categories here, but you're going to see that it would confuse Ryza. So we're not, I'm not even going to put the categories here for now. Now I have my definitions already. My basic load cases defined. Okay. These are what you would call the unfactored load. So close that up. And now we're ready to define the basic load cases. So you go to the distributed loads on the members like this. You have the Y and then here our first Distributed load is 20 pounds per foot, so which in kips is negative 0.02 kip per foot. We don't need to mess around with the start and end location because we're going to apply it on the entire length of the beam. Here is your list of predefined basic load cases. This is a dead load case, so we click on that. I'm going to keep this dialog open because we're going to keep this box open because we're going to keep doing this. So I'm going to click on apply. And now when I go over here, I'm going to click on each of the members and you should see the 0.02 kip per foot applied to each member. You will see if you click here a little x, little y, little z. Those are the local coordinates with respect to each member and you could apply the loading with respect to that as well but we're not going to do that yet. And now the next load is the live load case one. The live load case one is where the live load is on all spans. 50 PSF is our live load pressure. We are going to make that negative 0.05 kip per foot. That's going to be the distributed load on a one foot width. And I'm going to call that live load case one. I'm going to click on apply and it'll be boom, boom on all the spans. The next live load case is going to be the same magnitude. We're going to call it live load case two. But we're going to put it on alternating spans, starting with the span on the far left here. So click on apply here. I'm going to boom every other span. So if you number these spans, one, two, every odd numbered span. And then live load case three would be on these spans, the even numbered spans, two, four, and six. And then you can click on close. Now we're ready for the load combinations. There's only dead and live load, okay? So here, go to load combos. So this LC, you can choose on LC, or you could choose over here, this click load combination. So here you can go on load combinations. And once we get to the bottom, that means you're ready to run it, right? You get down to the list, it's like, yes. It's like, check, 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 check. It feels so good when all the items are checked. You have no idea. All right, the fulfillment. It's just like writing your goals and checking those. But of course, not everyone does that, even though we talk about it, even if you're my advisee, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, all right. all right, it's not that funny. All right, so here you go and you click on the load combinations. The first one, you know, we're going to use 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. We kind of know already that is the governing load combo. But we have basically case one. I'm going to call that case one. And that's where the dead load and live load are everywhere. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say dead load, yes, because we can we have only one dead load type. So we can put 1.2. That's the factor. Go to click on basic load case. It's the case where live load case one, where the live load is everywhere. Live load is everywhere. You click on OK. And then the factor for this is 1.6. Next, I click on enter. And I'm going to repeat the process. This is 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live case 2. Everything is the same except for right here. This should be a 3. It's the second live load case. That's If you click on this right here, you will see our, in our thing live load case 2, which is on the odd numbered spans. Click on OK. And then if you're ambitious, click on enter one more time and type in 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live case 3 and then you go to basic load case here 
and call that 4. Okay, call that 4. And that corresponds where our even numbered spans are loaded with live load. Cancel. I know the numbering seems a little awkward because in RISA you're choosing 2, 3, 4, but the live load cases are 1, 2, 3. Maybe we should call them A, B, C. Whatever makes you feel better. You might be interested in this design thing right here. And basically it's saying, okay, I want to design with all these materials. You don't need to do anything. We know that we're going to design with concrete. As long as it's checked, you're good. Okay, so I'm going to close that back up. Now we're ready to solve. If I want to design this thing right here, I might do what's called the batch solution. Batch solution means RISA will solve each load combination one by one. I go to batch solution of mark combinations right here. I go to the equal sign. Equal means like solve. Equal. Or you could go over here and you could do solve batch. That's another choice. So after you click on load combination, you'll see these little highlights come up or these little tiles and you can click on solve batch. I'll close that up. You could just click on equals also right here and I would say uh, solve the batch solution. So I'm gonna click on the batch solution and I click on solve. So everyone ready? Here's the moment of truth. Oh, the batch solution included at least one combination without P delta effects. Since LRFT ACI code checking has been requested, member optimization couldn't be done. What the heck does that mean? RISA will not optimize your design unless you include P-delta effects as required per code. All of you don't know what P-delta effects are, right? They, no, right? Unless you took steel design, which is like this, anyway, additional moment caused by deformation. No problem. Let's go back and fix that. Don't worry about that. Click on no. I don't want to create a new model. Get rid of those results. Go to load combinations again. Click back on the combinations. You see where it says P-delta? Just put a Y there. Yes, this will this will ruin my uh, previous solve. That's fine. You want to click on yes on all of these right here. You could click on them, or you could just type Y and enter. That will also. Oops, I almost added too many lines. Delete current line. See ya. All right, now let's let's try. Okay, let's try now. So I, I close this up. I want to solve the batch again. Solve instabilities were detected, blah blah blah. That's okay because we were doing a 2D model in 3D, but it's all good. Inst okay, blah blah blah. No, I don't want to create a new one, otherwise, it's going to ruin my results. Click on no. Everyone's good. So now, here's our moment of truth right here. So, first, let's look at the structural analysis results. At minimum, this is what you could use right here. So, if I click on Right here, you see that that little, it looks like a little TV screen with a picture of a bridge. I look, It looks like an M to me, but anyway, you can click on that. Go to members, go to members, go to member results, go to moments about the Z in this case, this little Z. You will see the different load cases that you want to consider. One, two, three. You click on apply, and what you will see is the moment diagram for that one entire load case load combo one this is the moment diagram you could scroll over here you can scroll through so check this out if i want to get rid of the uh the loading you see that little arrow those two arrows right there i can if i click on them it'll make them disappear okay it'll come on and off if i click on this right here instead of it'll it'll toggle between ba dead load live load basic load cases and load combinations and I want to see what the load combo is for load combo one. This is what my load combo one looks like all put together. Don't worry about it right now. I know I'm going fast on that part. That's not a problem. This is the moment diagram here. Okay. That's the moment diagram. Again, so I go here to bring up the plot options. This little M looking deal. Go to members. Moment ZZ. There's a little drop down list. MZZ. I'm going to click on magnitudes. And this time I'll show load case two. Click on apply and you will see load combo two or load case two results. Same thing with load case three, apply, and you will see the peak values when I click on magnitudes there. You have your shear and moment diagrams, but the problem is when you design, you know, you don't want to overlap all of these on your own by hand, right? You have three different load combinations and you've got to overlap them to figure out where the max shear and what max shear value is and what the max moment and max moment location are. And so instead of doing that, when you go to solve, go to solve here, click envelope of, of marked combinations and click solve. Yes, clear the results. Uh, we're going to ignore it. Would you like? No, I do not. 
and you will see it, everything put together all three load combinations and if you plot the magnitudes this looks funny but it's all good right here if you plot the magnitudes this will be the moments the worst case positive and negative moments for the entire length of your beam all in one go back to your batch solution and click solve yes would you like and i want you to click on detail here and click on the first member right there i want you to look at this look at this entire member detail result would you scroll down look at it for a second okay yeah all right all right are we ready for the magic this thing is a Okay, hopefully you've scrolled down. First, I want you to look at the ACI 318 code check. Here's the bending check. Here's the shear check. They're both under one. Great. If they weren't under one, this, this output would have been in red. There's a location that tells you what they're designed to, the location for the shear, governing moment, blah, 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 all this stuff, everything, concrete weight, modulus of elasticity of concrete, the steel bar, all the properties. And then I scroll down and it tells me the bars I've chosen, how long they should be in that 10 foot segment and the cross section geometry. Yes. So that is our, our design. You got when you do this, you got to ignore the shear stuff because we're not designing a beam. It's a one way slab. But basically what they're saying is we need two number three bars every foot. That's according to this. But at least this is an area of steel per foot. An area of steel per foot already outputted for you. Amazing, okay? Check this out. I want you to check out one more thing. Look, I know you're all excited. You think you're done. We're not done, okay? Look, check this out. The, the magic never stops. If I look at my results and you go click on suggested design. You don't have your results, suggested design. Click get rid of this. Go to suggested design. Oh, there's no suggested shape. I don't know for sure, right? But I'm pretty sure that the reason it's not there's no suggested shape is because flexure is not governing. Right now, this thing is being controlled by a minimum reinforcement ratio requirement. And all it's doing is taking this cross section and, and taking whatever you input. We chose 6 by 12. So when it comes to designing this one-way slab, what would you do if you wanted to try to make this thing thinner? You're going to have to go back, go to the section sets right here, go to the shape right here, Click on yes and say, okay, let me try, let me try instead four and a half inches. When we have the section set here, once we change one spot, everything changes. So I click on okay. I close this up. I go back to, I don't have to change anything else. I go back to my load combinations with the three cases. And then I click on solve the batch again. Okay. Oh snap, it gave me a bunch of errors, right? It says warning, warning. All these warnings came up because I violated code probably. Okay. All right, so here, would you like to create a new model? No. Okay. Cover top cover value too large. What did I change? Anyway, okay, so let's see what happened here. And then here I'll click on detail. Let me get rid of the moment diagram. But if I click on member detail again here, Another thing I want you to notice is that the design automatically uses the envelope even though you ran a batch solution. The latest version of Ryza will run the batch and the envelope at once. Here, if I look at it again, the bending and, and shear checks are fine. Everything is good. And I go back to the design. It's still two number three bars. It's still 12 inches, 4.5 inch depth slab. The only thing you have to worry about is, again, the transverse, making sure you have enough space for transverse steel and longitudinal steel to, when they intersect and the cover distances and so amazing in fact there is a report for every single member yes